Good morning, church. It is good to welcome you this morning. I am... <laughs> Tomorrow, today is going to be just a little bit different. I have managed to pop your knee in all the ways you're not supposed to pop your knee. <laughs> so I'm hobbling a little, and I thought, well, I won't do a really long sermon. It'll be fine. But look, they brought me a chair, so we're golden. Um, <laughs> some of you are like, somebody go get the chair. Uh, we have just a few announcements this morning. Um, first of all, in your seats, you will see that there is lots of information for you. Um, from a flyer to remind you about our food truck potluck coming up on the 30th, um, you can purchase tickets after church from me. I'll have them up here, cash up. I don't have any change, um, but uh, we'll start selling in earnest next week. But if you want to purchase through cash up or you have exact change, you can do those with me today. Um, you'll also see these little slips of paper. These are the way that we honor God with our blessing, the way God has blessed us. So we invite everyone each week to think of one way in which God has blessed us, and then we bring it forward during our tithe and offering as a demonstration that God is at work in the world. And so it gets collected and posted to our webpage and becomes a testimony to the greater community. So I invite you right now, start thinking one small way in which God has blessed you. Um, so we have food pantry distribution coming up this Saturday, the 17th, right? Where's your wife? <laughs> well, we have had three. Oh, that's right. She's flying back in. I think this is the third Saturday, right? Okay. Um, so third Saturday, food pantry distribution. We are definitely going to need extra volunteers. We are certainly going to need extra people to help pray because I don't think I'll be standing on this leg to walk down the row of cars. So have that in your mind. We need people who can help pray in English and in Spanish uh, this week. So Put that on your radar. Um, for August 30th, our food truck potluck, 
Our proceeds will go to support our food pantry. And here is the sign-up sheet, uh, two pages, so look and see. I'm going to start with Marty as I... <laughs> Well, as he waits 20 minutes for me to walk over. Um, we anticipate 200 people, maybe more. If you remember uh, in May when we did it, we had almost 400. We topped out at like 350. Um, and then we actually had some extras. Oh, hey, wait, I'm supposed to be in the middle. Sorry, Edgar, don't worry. Um, uh, we had some extra people come, and thankfully we had extra food, so we did... I'm closer to 380. Um, so keep that in mind. And what I'd really like to encourage you to do, uh, I think it's become just part of who we are. We each buy a slew of tickets and we give them to our friends. I'd like you to do that. Don't, make, don't get me wrong. I want you to buy tickets and give to whoever you want to give. But I invite you to really try to sell tickets outside of our church. Um, so... I think the way I've been instructed we should do that is we buy them and then we sell them because we did it the other way one time and we really shorted out and we didn't make any money for the ministry that we were trying to raise money for because people brought back a ton of tickets. Um, but when we are outside in the community and we say we are selling tickets to raise money for this ministry that is for people outside of our church, people want to participate in that. Um, and it's just one more way to reach out to the greater community and they can come see what we're about and find a church home. So think about that, pray about that, let the Lord wrestle with you as he will. Um, we also... This is the 30th anniversary of Shoebank. I'll invite Jackie right before the offering to come share again. Um, but you'll see on the seats there are Shoebank brochures. Um, so start looking at all that good information. We sent out uh, the digital flyer. Think about the great work this community has done, this church, 30 years of taking care of school children. That's pretty spectacular. That is so the heart of God. That is so Matthew 25. I'm not going to tell you what Matthew 25 says. You get to look it up and then see if I'm right or wrong. I think that might be a new game we play, is I'm going to randomly throw out a scripture location and see if any of you will go back to see if I made it up or if it says what I said it did. That could be a lot of fun. If you catch me in a deliberate deception, I'll take you to Starbucks or for a burger or something. Um, ooh, this could be such a fun pastor game. Um, so with that, I think those are all of my announcements for this morning. We are going to have communion again, um, and it will be early in the service, but we're going to do it differently. We're going to pass it to you. So we'll have ushers to hand you the bread basket. You will take touch only your piece of bread, and then we'll have the trays with the cups, and then trays, uh, baskets that follow to pick up um, the disposable cups. This is us coming to the table together before we even start with the Word of God, that we start in community. We start in a place of understanding that we are sons and daughters, beloved children of God, and we gather together first. Here is where we claim our identity, and then we talk about the word together. So just be aware, we're going to be having communion for a while. Today, last week, Barb made the communion bread. This week, Johnny made communion bread. He's like, you should have waited till after we had communion bread. I have had your bread. It's spectacular. I have no fear. Um, and so with that, if you are joining us online, we welcome you in the peace and grace of Jesus Christ. I invite you to begin passing the peace online so much more than just good morning or we're checking in from, but a blessing one to another in the peace of Jesus, to love one another in the peace of Jesus. If you are gathered here in person, I invite you to take out your smartphone, check in on that thread, bless our online family, and then I'm going to invite you to stand and greet each other in the peace and grace of Jesus Christ, whether that's with a handshake or a hug or an elbow bump, whatever you are both comfortable with. Um, may the peace of Christ be with you. Let's
such a whiny cripple. <laughs> I have a chair. I have a chair. As you make your way back, I believe Gary is leading us in the call to worship today. You can remain standing or not. Did you say Gary? Who told me Gary? Maybe not. Uh, oh, no, it's Linda. <laughs> oh, it's coming up. It'll come up. Stand as you are able. If you prefer to sit. Feel free. Good morning. Good morning. Please stand. Already doing that. Okay, I will read the leader's portion and please respond with the people's portion. Lord, if you kept a record of our sins, who, O oh Lord, could ever survive? But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. I'm I am counting, counting on, on the Lord. Lord. Yes, yes, I am, I am counting, counting on, on him. him. I, I have put my hope, hope in his word. I, I long for the Lord more, more than, than centuries, centuries long for the dawn. dawn. Yes, yes, more, more than, than centuries, centuries long for the dawn. dawn. Please remain standing. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice. Trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. All will sing. How great, how great is our God. Ancient ways she stands. Time is in his hand, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God had three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, Lion and the Lamb. How great! Our God, sing with me how great is our God. All will sing how great, how great is our God. The name above all names, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, all will sing how great, how great is our God, how great is our God. 
is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. Lord God, we declare your worth and your worthiness to know you as everlasting to everlasting, the King, the one who draws us near, who calls us close. We ask that you would fill this time with your presence, that you would saturate the atmosphere, that we would be moved into demonstrations of our own worship, God, that we would sing out loud, we would raise our hands, we would Feel you in whatever way is natural to us, and we would not try to contain it. That this morning, more than we come seeking something from you, we come to bring something to you. God, we come to give you our love. We come to give you our worship. We come to give you our praise. We come to give you our sacrifices. God, that this morning we turn our eyes and our affections to you. That you are God and we are not. You are the Holy One. You are the one that is worthy of praise. You are the one, God. And we come as those who love you. To bless you. To offer ourselves to you. To make confession before you. We love you. And we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. I'm just going to give the media folks a heads up that I'm staying right here if you need to change the microphone. So we come to the table first. We come and we gather together. And there is an invitation we offer that is offered to us that we offer to each other. Would you join me by reading that invitation on the screen? We are here because Jesus has called us, strangers and friends, locals and visitors, believers and doubters, the certain and the curious. It is always a mixed company that Jesus gathers and invites to his table where in the bread and cup he meets us. And through him, we who are different are joined to each other. So come, not because you understand, but because you are understood. Come, not because of how you feel, but because God has food for you. Come, not because you deserve a place, but because Jesus invites you just as you are. Join me in the confession and pardon. Gracious and loving God, you invite us to the table, yet we resist your grace. It is sometimes easier to float around outside of the Christian community than it is to invest fully in it. You invite others to the table as well, Sometimes people whom we do not see as worthy, and sometimes people who make us feel unworthy ourselves. We put up barriers in places where you long to create circles of love and faith. We repent from these sins and ask you to forgive us for these and all of our trespasses. We continue now to confess in silence. In Jesus' name, amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, the night he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he blessed God for it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body given for you. 
When you do this, remember me. And then, at the end of the supper, Jesus took the cup, the cup of salvation, the cup of the new covenant again, and again he blessed God for it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take this, all of you, and drink. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink this, remember me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and those gathered by your Spirit and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Those assisting with communion, please come forward. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you.
Lord God, we feast at your table. We eat and are full. We know the miracle of the fishes and the loaves, that you take what you bring, and, you, and it's more than enough. God, by the mystery of your Holy Spirit, we encounter you in a real way. May we be transformed in this space. May eating at the table together bind us together in ways that we were somehow held apart. God, may we gather here as often as we may to find our place of home and belong. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 35, and then 41 through 51. I invite you to read along with me on the screen. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the people began to murmur in disagreement because he had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? We know his father and mother. How can he say, I came down from heaven? But Jesus replied, stop complaining about what I said. For no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. And at the last day, I will raise them up. As it is written in the scriptures, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has ever seen the Father, only I, who was sent from God, have seen him. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread, which I will offer so the world may live, is my flesh. These are the words of God for the people of God. Kind of weird, huh? This bread is my flesh. If somebody said that today with no context of Jesus, they'd be like, it's a cult, run. <laughs> but here... Jesus says, this is who I am for you. And if you are at all familiar with the Gospel of John, or maybe if you're, if you're familiar with the story of the Samaritan woman, so that's John chapter 4, and that's where Jesus says, I am the living water. And now Jesus tells them, I am the bread from heaven. I am the living bread from heaven. I am the bread of life. And what you hear in some of their grumbling and trying to make sense and knowing Jesus came from Nazareth and nothing good comes from Nazareth and all of the things with all of the things. They start saying, well, Moses gave us manna. And of course, we talked about this last week. Jesus says, no, no, the Father gave you manna through Moses. Moses got to tell you it was coming and gave you the rules. But the manna was from heaven, from God. But I am the living bread. I am the bread of life. And so in my head, I start trying to make these comparisons. And I'll invite you to play along. Um, what is, if you can think, one difference between manna and Jesus as the bread? Don't tell me he's a person. Man is actually bread. But what are some of the differences between manna and Jesus?
One is for the body, one is for the heart. Is that what you were saying? Very good. Anything else? Manna, you could only have manna for one day unless it was the eve of the Sabbath. But then if you tried to store up more than what you need, and you were only allowed to keep what you needed, like you could gather as much as you wanted, but if you didn't need it, it was gone the next day. You could not save it up. And if you got more than you needed, it went bad, like immediately. And the stories that describe it are gross. Um, so manna, good for a day. Jesus, good for a lifetime. I feel like I'm writing a car commercial. Um, anything else that stands out to you just immediately? Manna was a wafer. Bread is, I like the way, she says that like somebody who likes her bread. Bread is bread. <laughs> Manna was a wafer, and it was like this delicate little uh, thing, like it fell with the dew, so you get the impression that it was light, and it tasted like honey and sweet, and it was succulent, but bread, man, we can slather stuff on bread and eat it hot out of the oven and um, bread in near ancient culture was a big sign of hospitality, and so there were ways to do stone. Like you made bread on hot stones, and it came out like pita or um, naan and all that good stuff. And you were always able to make it in a very short amount of time so that when people showed up, you offered them hospitality. Manna was about what you needed to survive, and the bread is about hospitality. Very interesting pieces. I am the bread of life. But I think the thing that I keep coming back to time and again is that manna cannot be stored. And Jesus is forever. Forever. In every circumstance, in every trial, in every crisis. And nothing diminishes Jesus. You can't get too much you can never have too much Jesus. If you had too much manna, it went bad. There's no such thing as too much Jesus. You can't store manna away. You can't, like, pack up extra and put it in a fridge and hope it's there when you get back. But Jesus, even when you sort of tuck him out of sight, he doesn't leave you, and he doesn't reject you. And he doesn't make you ill when you go back for that next bite. <laughs> if you've ever had um, something you really loved and you know it's been in the fridge a little too long and you're like, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's still okay. I know that smells a little funky, but just one last, and then it ruins it for you forever. Like you just can't. Jesus never goes bad. Jesus never is diminished. Jesus always is our place of nourishment beyond the body to the spirit. Jesus is that place of coming together. That place where we are at the table together. What does it look like for you to offer bread to someone else. When somebody asks you if you will bake them bread, do you get excited like Barb and Johnny did and were plowing through their mental inventory of all the recipes they have? And I'll admit, I sort of expected rosemary focaccia bread. <laughs> Johnny's, well, it's one of your faves. Um, but Johnny knew the assignment. He did real communion bread. <laughs> Like, do you get excited about baking for somebody? Or when somebody tells you, we're having homemade bread today. So-and-so made their homemade rolls for Thanksgiving. Does it just make you immediately hungry? You can't wait to sit at the table. When somebody talks about Jesus being the bread of life, Jesus being the living water, Jesus being the living bread from heaven, it ought to trigger this spiritual hunger in us. 
It ought to trigger this place where we are excited. We know it's going to be the best bread we have all week. It is going to be that place that really nourishes us. It's that, that bread that fills us. It sustains us. We often talk um, when we are using very poetic language, um, when some say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, we also hear Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, and we use Sustainer for Holy Spirit. But there's a part of me that's like, Jesus should be the Sustainer. He's the bread. He's that, he is that filling I can taste, sustain me. Who doesn't let me stay hungry. That fills every empty, broken place inside. Jesus, the bread of life. And so I invite you this week to think about what it means to bring someone to your table to share bread. And all the weird, eccentric ways that that can be. Like maybe literally you invite somebody to go for a meal and you have bread on the table. Maybe if you're a baker, you bake a loaf of bread and you take it to somebody just to say, I love you and I'm thinking about you. Maybe you're not a baker and you go to Breadsmith and buy. They are not a sponsor. I feel like I need to get that disclaimer out. You go to your favorite bakery and buy a loaf of bread and take it to someone. Whatever it looks like to share bread, to maybe have it together. I'm a firm believer that scones count as living bread, and so go to coffee with somebody. Whatever that looks like. And remember Jesus at that table. We have a ritual of communion, a holy discipline, where there is a consecration and we invite uh, the Holy Spirit and the epiclesis for God's Holy Spirit to imbue into the bread and the cup. And we have this holy mystery where we don't understand exactly how it works, but we have had an encounter with the living presence of God. And that's what we call communion. But we also know that in near ancient Israel, as Jesus speaks these words over the Passover meal, he says, anytime, anytime you have bread, anytime you have the cup, remember me. Remember me, the living bread from heaven. Remember this cup, the living water. We just remember We've invited each other into a holy space, and things change. We are changed. And God is glorified. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we love you and we bless you. We ask for your presence. We ask that we would feast on you more than just on Sunday. That when we wake up in the morning, we would be hungry for your word. Around mid-morning, we would be hungry for your presence, and we would offer prayers, and we would sit and listen for just a moment for what it is you have for us. That as we sit at our noontime meal or our midday meal, that we would remember it is by your abundance that we are filled. And in the afternoon, when we start to drag and we know we've got to make it through the afternoon slump, we would remember that your word is sweeter than honey and we would be revived by it. And when evening comes and we share our final meal of the day, We would remember good friends. We would make room for you at that table. We would be in conversation with you and each other at that table. And when we lay our head down at night, 
we would be so filled that we would offer thanks again for all the ways that you have shown us your abundance, all the ways that you have shown us your provision. And we would give thanks that we would be hungry for you again in the morning. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, Glorious in heaven above Humbly you came to the earth you created All for love's sake become poor Here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that you're my God, altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. So Lord, we come into a time of prayer. And our eyes and our hearts are focused on you. Our spirit nourished by sharing at the table, remembering you in the bread and the cup, but having our soul fed by your word. And God, as we have confessed to be ready to receive, God, we, we just ask that you would remind us in gentle ways those places where you have more for us where you desire better from us. The ways that we can live into our identity as sons and daughters, beloved children. Where we offer hope. 
Where when we see somebody hungry, we offer more than a prayer. That we take steps to really live out compassion, that it stirs in our belly and it moves us to action. We begin by lifting those in our community who need your heart and intervention and wisdom and grace, who need your healing. For Don and Donna, Ed, Loretta, Scott and Laura, Kim, John and Melissa, Irma, Charles, JJ, Art, Nilda, Linda, Jimmy, Jane, Roberto, Aiden, Alice. God, for those in our community who struggle with illness, we ask that you would bring healing. For those who struggle with resources, we ask that you would open up a way. That you would pour out the storehouses of heaven. God, for those who are just numb, God, we don't know what it looks like or feels like to be hungry for you. We are just too easily satisfied with the distractions of the world and the little bits we take. invite you to use the mentee link to offer your prayers today. For better health. Healing and enlightenment for Stacy Childress. Prayers for peace and clarity for my family and friends. Please bless Mike with comfort and peace after the loss of his mother. God, for the things we don't know how to pray, for the things we think don't matter to you, God, for the things we are too ashamed or too embarrassed or it feels too raw, too vulnerable, we invite you in. We open ourselves to you and we trust you. for all the things we don't know how to make right. Would we make a daily practice of asking you to be present? Instead of asking for you to fix it, God, would you just help us walk through it? Discovering you, leaning on you, being surprised by your grace and your power as we prepare to go back to school to face a new season God would you just bring refreshment 
these last few days, these last few weeks. Would you give visions and dreams to teachers and students about their future, about the joy that awaits them, the adventure that awaits them, the beauty in store, the great joys the strength of resilience, that you are with them. Please help my friend's father who is going through some health complications. Lord, hear our prayer. God, we lift these. We ask that you would be present. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we move into our time of offering, I'll invite Jackie to come and share with us about Shoebank. I found some old shoes. Do you like them? <laughs> Those of you who have been around a long time, Shirley Bear bought these. Aww. Long ago. <laughs> um, last week I gave you a little history and I told you about the school year starting and shoe bank and what we were going to do. Um, this year I wanted, this week, I want to tell you a few extra facts because I do like numbers. School starting, I taught at counting forever and then I taught how to take apart and put back to computer, put the computer back together. That fascinated me. So that's why you're going to get numbers today. Four high schools in Edinburgh School District, seven middle schools. 31 elementary, and three alternative. You never really ask about those, but they need help. And then for some fun facts, Edinburgh School District began in 1909. Wow. We thought 30 years was something great. And it covers a land mass of 945 square miles. Those are big numbers. Three years ago, this congregation was able to give this, the school $10,000 for shoes. Two years ago, we gave them $12,000. And last year, we gave them $16,000. But because I'm a little cautious, Dana says I need to have more faith, uh, we kept 11,000 in the coffers, and so actually you brought in $27,000 last year. So we've already, here we are, we're only second week in this campaign, and we've already bought some shoes. We bought $10,000 worth of shoes. Which means I did listen to Dana, and we do have a very tiny balance right now. <laughs> so, notice I have to take a breath. That's kind of got me. Um, for those of you who don't know the process, the parental involvement lady is just amazing. Her name is Sandra Rodriguez, so you can have a name to a position. She is my go-to person with the school district. 
and she is the go-to person for the, all of the counselors and teachers and nurses and people on campus who see kiddos who need new shoes. And she puts that referral in, and then based on acceptance, she herself or one of her staff, they go to shoe carnival, and with the shoe size that they need, they pick out and they get a good shoe for the kids to go back to school in. And she gets shoe carnival employees to kick in their buy one, get one, even if it's not advertised, but don't tell that. And they also sometimes help with socks so that those kiddos, if you had a pair of tennis shoes and you ever wore them with no socks or the wrong pair of socks, you know how desperately important that is. So it's good that they do that. Every single dollar you give goes to the shoe bank. None will be used for anything other than that. Wouldn't it be awesome? Oh, and I need to tell you one more thing before I about to quit here. We already received a gift of $5,000 from Rotary. So our goal is this year that we can get more businesses involved so that we can hit a new goal if it's the 30th year, 30,000. Thank you. So begin praying. Pray for hearts to be softened, for local Edinburgh businesses to want to be part of what we do in this community, um, and that we make sure if they need shoes, they get them. Come. We have reached the time in our service where we worship God by bringing our gifts, our tithes, our offering, our sacrifice of praise. Let's worship the Lord together. Take these gifts, bless them, multiply them, do with them infinitely more than we could dream or imagine for the good of your kingdom and the glory of your name. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. An ending love, amazing The Lord has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Ending love, amazing grace. shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbid to shine but God who called me below will be forever mine will be offer the blessing, I'm going to ask Mauricio to come. He's going away to college this week. I can't hardly imagine. Family, come too. Um, you're all going to lay hands. I'm going to put you on the chair so I can hold myself up. <laughs> Have a seat. It's the prayer chair, the thing that scares everybody. Uh, <laughs> if you would like to come lay hands on Mauricio, you are welcome to come up. You don't have to. Mom, brother, my hands, we're good. Uh, if you would, extend a hand as we pray. He's headed off to A&M on Saturday, right? Oh. All right, here we go. Lord God, we lift Mauricio to you. Brother, friend, oh, beloved child of God, he has been part of this community since he was very little. And so, God, we fill him with all the blessing, grace, hope, joy, help, hope that we can imagine, God. And that as deeply as we love him, you love him a thousand times more. And so, God, as he goes forward, would you give him eyes to see how you are with him, how you are for him, how you fight battles for him, how you guard him and protect him. Would you give him eyes to see a grand adventure? Would you open before him all the mysteries 
that you have in store, the things he will learn about himself, the things he's going to learn about the world, the things he's going to learn about school and the people in this world, God, and he would see the best in them because he sees them through your eyes and your heart. Would you give him a worshiping community and a faith community in College Station that uplifts him and encourages him and has the right words of encouragement for him when things are difficult? Would he remember that geography doesn't define family and so that just because he's gone away to school doesn't mean he isn't still ours and that we will pray for him and lift him and encourage him in every way that you show us. God, would you make his pathway straight? Would you just make this first semester a little bit easier than they usually are? God, would you... um, Fill him with such joy and such anticipation. Great new friends that are waiting to walk along this journey with him. God, we ask that you would also bless his family as they release him into this season, that you would give them comfort and courage and trust the way they have raised this son and the way he is walked in his faith and identity as a son of God. We love you and we bless you, and it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Okay, hold on. I'm going to do the benediction. Hold on. Uh, (laughs) I'll bless everybody too. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you favor. The Lord lift his face to you and give you his shalom, his peace. Amen. Okay, there we go.